Come on down and see a team like you've never seen before with Shaolin Soccer. There's Mighty Steel Leg, a leg so strong he can kick a ball to the next planet even. There's Iron Head, who smokes cigarettes while he plays soccer with his Mighty Iron Head. And of course, there's Lightweight, Little Brother. He can fly through the sky. And don't forget, Mr. Lightning Hands himself, fourth brother as the goalie. Looks just like Bruce Lee, too. So come on down, see soccer like it's never been played before with Shaolin Soccer. Today on the Supercast. Welcome back to the Supercast. I am the Super Foch, the man who put the Super in Supercast. And as always, I am joined by my buddy and co-host. Steve Z, the man who put the Z in Supercast. And how you doing tonight, buddy? Feeling kind of crazy, feeling kind of silly because we're talking about a... <laughs> I would say it's probably one of the silliest movies ever made. It was very silly. Yeah. Some would say too silly. Maybe a little too <laughs> juvenile or yeah. just... I don't know about Not that. Really based in reality whatsoever, but that makes it my kind of movie. That's true, and, and there's definitely a place for him. Um, that's, of course, we're talking about uh, Shaolin Soccer, and we're going to get into that, but uh, first of all, I just want to say hey to everybody, and uh, we, of course, as we were recording this, we had our first ever uh, live episode last night, dude. How you feeling about that? Pretty awesome. It was it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We're definitely gonna yeah. do those more often. Probably by yep. the time this video comes out, we've already done another one. Hopefully, check that out. Probably so. So, check it out. Um, very very excited about that. Very very happy how that turned out, and uh, look forward to doing that. But today we're gonna talk about a movie that uh, of course Steve shared with me, and I'm very happy to share with you guys, our fans here. And so let's get into it, man. It's called Shallon Soccer. And it's made by Stephen Chow. Want to introduce Stephen Chow to those who may not be as familiar? Yeah, so Stephen Chow, he, he's an actor. He, he got big in the 1990s in Hong Kong cinema. And he started <laughs> off as, he's kind of like the straddles the line between not really action, because he can do some mm -hmm. kung fu and stuff because Bruce Lee's like his hero. Um, but he's kind of like right. that, but also serious, zany comedy is his, mm. his forte. <laughs> um, so he starts off with this, the big first film I saw him in is this film called uh, Fight Back to School, where he's like an undercover cop that pretends he's in high school. <laughs> and he goes back and he, that movie is crazy because it goes from like super silly to the last 10, 15 minutes, it turns into Die Hard all of a sudden. <laughs> so his films are known for their, their tones that are all over the place. Right. I think the one that, kind of got him on this path of this film is this this film called uh, God of Cookery where he plays like sort of like an iron chef have you ever mm -hmm. seen that show he's like the super yep. chef that can cut up stuff and all that and it was just a very <laughs> silly film I like that one a lot and then he had the king of comedy and then finally came out with this mm -hmm. one where I think he he hit his tone he hit his because that's the thing he's not just an actor he's yeah. a writer and he's a director so he's he just does all three so this is definitely wow. a Stephen Chow vehicle. He wrote it, he okay. directed it, and he stars in it. Is uh, this your favorite, or what would you say your favorite Stephen Chow film is? Uh, that's really hard. If not this um, one. <laughs> I like the one he actually did after this, Kung Fu Hustle. Um, okay. I think that one actually gets crazier. And okay. if you, it actually gets better. Like it, it okay. does a lot of stuff in there where it just turns into like it feels, the feeling of it feels like a 1940s, 1950s film. But then it right. all of a sudden it starts doing all this Kill Bill and Matrix stuff. And you're like, okay, I see where its influences are coming from. So it, that one is very insane and it's all over the place. And I really like the, um, the Mermaid that came out a few years ago. I know some people okay. are not really into that romantic comedy scene, but right. I thought that one was really good. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get into those at a later date. But right now we're going to talk about this movie called Shallon Soccer. 
Um, so let's get into it. Uh, kind of explain the plot of this film because I don't know if I can, but you go ahead and, 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 and let us know what the plot of this film is, buddy. All right, so it starts off and it's a flashback of sorts. It's Golden Leg, as he's known as the film. Oh, yeah. And he's just the <laughs> star soccer player. And they're at the championship game. Yeah. And notice how this film is just like surface level as can be. It's like <laughs> all the stereotypes you can think of in a film. That's kind of its characters. So Golden Leg, he's the star soccer player. He misses the shot in the championship. People hate him. They rush him. They break his leg. And you're like, what the heck? These fans are nuts. But yeah, that's pretty... That's, some soccer fans are that crazy if you've seen any of that stuff, uh, the riots and all that. That's true. Um, so, sh flash forward to present time, and he's a washed up person. He's just serving the the manager of Team Evil. And guess what? They're the bad guys. So he's yeah. managing them. The he wants to manage his own team. Fortunately, nobody's going to give him a shot. So he goes out and he meets yeah. our hero of the film, Mr. Mighty Iron Leg, who yeah. played by Stephen Chow. And Iron Leg, yeah. he's just like the ultimate optimist. I don't know if he felt sorry for him during this part, but this guy, this guy's so poor, everybody just takes a crap <laughs> on him. He, yeah. he has, I mean, his job is just lugging around trash and recycles and <laughs> trying to get people to sign up for Kung Fu lessons because he's just like, Shaolin Kung Fu is the best Kung Fu. It will help you. It will solve all your problems. Please sign right. up. Yeah. And he's a master, but he looks like he's a beggar. He's like wearing the, the rattiest clothes. His shoes have holes in them. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's not phased by the world. He's sad. Yeah. on the inside but at the same time he's right. not going to let his optimism uh, or he's not going to let his optimism wane and he right. sees the beauty in the smallest things like when he meets Moy <laughs> who is this girl that that serves steam buns he's just in, enraptured by her beauty <laughs> but she's he is she's not a looker at this point in the film she's um no I guess you could say her lack of confidence is what's making her look ugly uh, she just does not mm -hmm. have the confidence, but she is a master at making these buns. She Shaolin <laughs> ma master, if you will, because he he yeah. sees her techniques right. and how she's mastered this, and he just breaks out in a song just because he's so amazed at how <laughs> awesome she is. And that's just kind of the tone this film sets. It just they're just gonna hey, randomly yeah. start dancing and singing, even though it's not a musical. Yeah. And then we get to meet the rest right. of the Shaolin brothers. And they, too, were not doing so well. Uh, they're very mm -hmm. depressed since their teacher died. They have no direction in life. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Golden yeah. Leg. Not yeah. Iron Leg. That's Stephen Chow's character. But Golden Leg is going to give him the direction because yeah. he says, I'm going to teach you guys how to play soccer. And especially <laughs> after he sees what these guys can do. Um, especially Iron Leg yeah. kicks a can up to the sky and it lands down into a wall and once you pull that can out of the wall, the wall falls down. It's just, it's, it's, insane. it's very insane. And that's what I love about this movie yes. is it's basically live action anime or that's, live action Looney Tunes, yeah. if you will. Yeah. It's, that's it does not beat it. around the bush. It's going to, no, where it's all of its emotions, all the comedy on its sleeve. There right. is no subtlety to it. It's just yeah. in your face comedy. Anything we can do to get a laugh. <laughs> and I, that's what I really like yeah. about it. Yeah, it's definitely over the top. It's definitely sort of vaudevillian a little bit, you know, a little bit of clown, mm -hmm. a little bit, a lot of, a, a, there's a lot of there, uh, a lot of, um, but like I said earlier, my favorite part is when they just break out into song because it's so unexpected for, even for a film like this, you're like, okay, they're going to sing now. All right. You know, um, but I, I rolled with that just because I'm used to that with musicals and stuff. But uh, the tone of this film is is very interesting because I, I was trying to think of what what film it was we reviewed. I don't know. Oh, I know what it was. It was uh, last night uh, in Soho. You know that the way that movie starts, you're like, this is not what I thought it was gonna be, and then it turns out to be something completely different. It's kind of like with this film, the way it starts out, kind kind of in the same way. Would wouldn't you say? Yeah. It's, his tones are all over the place. It's more consistent it than some of his films because some of his films can get downright serious at times. 
Yeah. This one, when it gets serious, it's more like over the top melodramatic. It's sort of soap opera ish. It's kind of yeah. funny. Um, so I don't think when it's trying to be serious, it's, it's really make an earnest effort at it. Right. Um, and when you have a movie like this where the tone is, or like Last Night and So, what do you think makes a movie like that work? Because you would think, just in theory, that jumping tones would kind of be confusing, right? Yeah, it doesn't always work because some people, <laughs> true, um, some people as an audience they can't just take it. They're just like, this right. is too challenging. This is too weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think a director can pull it off whenever they can establish it early on. Yeah. So you need to be on your toes when you watch this. True that. True and occasionally, that. it's generally the first ten or fifteen minutes. If they can catch you at that point, hmm. then the it's kind of like you as the audience are in the palm of their hands. Yeah. They can take you wherever. And I think that's what Stephen Chow does in this film is he sets it so fast paced. He's moving yeah. from character to character, scene to scene, sure. that you're just along for the ride. And if you if you can like this character, if you can mm-hmm. like Iron Leg and kind of feel sorry for him and want to see him succeed, <laughs> then yeah, you're gonna you're gonna wanna watch that. And also I think there's a, a rewatchable thing where like you if you know it's coming, you know, the second time you watch it, you can probably, you know, uh, take it better whereas you know if you're caught off guard a little bit and I think that was the thing with my first viewing is I was caught off guard a little bit but talking about it and just kind of re- reliving it in my mind and probably like I said re-watching it I get it now I totally get it and um, I think that's one thing about this film is that you got to understand what you're watching here and mm-hmm. it's it's um, it's an interesting film for sure it's it's definitely funny and like I said, with, with it breaking out in the song, which is something, um, when you're not expecting it, it can be a little jarring, but me as a musical person, I'm like, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's, that, that's fun. So, um, there's, there's a lot going on pretty much in this film. Yeah. It's, it's got some musical moments, like it's <laughs> got the one we already mentioned, but also randomly yeah. they start singing a song, Kung Fu or Shaolin Kung Fu is great. <laughs> Oh, it is great. And they're singing a yeah. random song, and, and then they get beer bottles thrown at them. Shao Lam Kung Fu Sing, Ho Ho Yeah. Shao Lam Kung Fu King, Hai Ho Gun. Wo Hai Hi Tao Gong, Mo Dek Hi Tao Gong. Li Hai Gum Gong Tai, Mo Hai Gum Gong Tai. Yeah. 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 Turns into action movie briefly, where he <laughs> yeah. basically has to take these guys out, and this also a love story. It's uh, it just it's trying to do a lot, and it is at the same time you don't feel like you're overwhelmed. You don't feel like no, it's out of balance so. either. It just right um, for me the big thing is is the lead. I think Stephen Chow as yeah. as as Mighty Iron Leg, he's just such a likable guy. He 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 yeah. puts it all out all his cards on the table. Right. He, he wants to succeed, and that's why right. I, I don't know. There's one part of the film I don't buy, but I guess I'll get into it later. Okay. Um, but I I just want to see him succeed. I want to see him come out on top. Yeah. And I also say it's a sports movie. That's another aspect of it. But it's not yeah. just any sports movie. It's a sports movie that kind of makes fun of sports movies. If, if you yeah. get that. Right. Kind of like basketball a few years ago that the. Uh... The uh, South Park guys did something like that, you know. A little bit, I think it's it's just playing on those tropes. It's like, yeah. here's the team where they're always reluctant to get together at first, but eventually they get together, 
and they suck at first, but then they're awesome, just overnight or just in one second, yeah. and then it's all from there. That's kind of what it's all about. I mean, the thing is, you know, if you're talking about soccer or football, as they call it in some parts of the world, I mean, that's 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 a pretty uh, big sport to make fun of. I mean, they've got some diehard fans, as they even mention in this film and everything, uh, and then they show in this film, so pretty interesting sport to uh, kind of parody a little bit. Yeah, they're parrying it, but at the same but time, it's all in good any form. serious soccer fan would be offended by this no, movie. No, I, I don't think so. But I did see something really funny um, <laughs> right before we got on air. Uh-huh. Uh, I was just flipping through my YouTube, and I came across this guy that actually, he came across clips from this film. Yeah. And he thought it was an actual Chinese soccer league. Ah. And he was flipping out. He's like, they're so good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's he's awesome. Like, he's, like, freaking out. And... That's what I love about this movie is just <laughs> this is just how insane these guys yeah. are because those first few matches they don't even have to try they're just like yeah. I mean Iron Leg he just kicks it in by himself just from <laughs> wherever in the on the field and Mighty Head is gonna just headbutt it into the goal from fifty feet back. That's awesome. Uh, I mean we don't even see the goalie do anything until the second to last game. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Let's talk about some of the characters here. Uh, now you mentioned the Golden Leg. And, of course, uh, he's sort of the coach, I would guess, right? Yeah, he is. And he's the guy that we see him at the beginning. He gets broken down. He's yeah. he's also the skeptic. He's the outsider. He does not understand this Shaolin lifestyle. Um, but then once he sees it yeah. in action, he becomes sort of like the bad news bear coach where he's trying to get the best players on his team. He's going out recruiting. Yeah. And he's like, I'll show you how to play soccer. Yeah. I don't really think he shows them much other than that. No. He has one coaching scene, really, where he tells Mighty Leg that you're you're kicking it too hard, buddy. So here, kick an egg. Yeah. Until you can kick this egg, you're, right. you're not very good. Meanwhile, he takes the rest of them, actually, teaches them how to pass and stuff. And it's, it's, it turns into, like, peewee, foot, or peewee soccer there briefly, where they're just running yeah. out of cones and stuff. It's hard to believe that this team actually becomes, like, the champions at the end of the film. Right, because I mean, the rest of the team, as we get in, into them all, they're just kind of they're 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 okay. They're just there, you know. They're kind of like uh, they're kind of like your typical sports movie where you get the you know superstar athlete, and everybody's kind of like just there. They're okay. Yeah, you know? all the Shaolin guys, they're so, pretty good, but that's only like six players on the team, and yeah, um, the other five or so that they just throw out there are just random thugs that. We're on the team that they beat first, and they're like, "We're gonna join you. You're you're a masters now," and they're just kind of like there. Yeah. You don't really pay attention to them too much. Um, but the Shaolin guys, they're they're pretty yeah. funny. Uh, like I said, they're just kind of the cartoon characters. Like one guy, right. he's the fat guy. Guess what his right. his stick is? He <laughs> eats stuff. Yeah. yeah, and he can also fly. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Oh yeah, he can fly. And then there's that one guy that reason. does. The weird kick or whatever where he's spinning around like he's break dancing and i guess his thing is he thinks he's really pretty but he's he's got a terrible hair but it's really really silly film it's <laughs> what did you think of the soccer like i know you used to play soccer back in the day and uh, you're still a pretty good fan i guess uh, what did you think of the soccer in this film it's it's just so funny i just yeah. the, this guy could just i mean they score 50 goals in the first match it's just hilarious. They just yeah. score a goal from the kickoff, and he just everybody's just like celebrating every time they do it. They're like, "Yeah, oh my gosh!" Like, can you imagine watching a real game like this? And just be like, "What is yeah. this?" You know. I love it when they show up for their first game, and there's nobody in the stands. It's just the people cleaning the stands, and they're like, "Hey, thank you for supporting us." Yeah. And then eventually, by the end of it, they're, they the place is packed. Yeah, because I would I'd, I would go see this too if I see people flying around. I mean, um, especially yeah, by the time I mean, Team Evil comes around, these guys are like super <laughs> villains. Like they can <laughs> kick the ball so hard it'll just like make you fly fifty feet through the air. I tell you what, it reminded me of kind of like reminded me of uh, soccer crossed with like extreme professional wrestling or something like that. You know? Yeah, that's kind of what it is. It's I mean, you know who the good guys are. You know who the bad guys are. It's it's straightforward. <laughs> Sort of like the XFL. Remember the XFL when WWE Little bit. did the XFL years ago? You know, and it was it was kind of like football, but it was like very theatrical and 
you know, kind of thing. So that's what this kind of reminded me of a little bit. Yeah, it's it's very theatrical, and I mean, I love <laughs> how the the team evil. None of them even talk. They're just yeah. they're just grunt yeah. and yeah. kick the ball really hard. So is this based on anything? Is this based on any? sort of like uh comic or anything like that like do they have stuff like this that he based this on he was inspired by like a 1980s anime and i don't know which one it was okay but he was just like yeah i kind of want to do that in film something <laughs> like that yeah and if you do watch any like random japanese sports anime it's yeah. a lot like this uh, right. i watched one this summer and it was like a basketball in like oh my gosh, like yeah. this one character that he wears glasses and he just he never misses the three. He's just like, shoo, shoo, shoo. Ah. and then you have this one guy that's like he's the perfect defender or something. So <laughs> this stuff like that does exist. It's not just coming out of right. nowhere. I mean, yeah, that's what you got to think about. Is like you got like this had to come from somewhere. He had to get this from some idea because, like you said, it's basically live action anime. I mean, it's live action, but it's over the top. It's it's really really silly. And, um, you know, it's it's interesting cast of characters, interesting team, interesting opponents, you know, um, you know who the bad guys are, you know who the good guys are, everything kind of spelled out for you so you're not going to feel like, okay, who is who, what is, what's going on, it's, it's very much spelled out uh, pretty quickly, actually, too, but uh, it's, it is funny, there's definitely some funny moments uh, over the top, the tone, as we mentioned, is Pretty much all over the place. Anything else that you can like for if we're if we're trying to get people to watch this for the first time, anything else you could say about this film to kind of sell people that are still on the fence at this point, which I don't know how you could be. <laughs> um, it's it's just the so many sight gaps. Yeah, that's a big thing from it. Like they're lining up to play the first match. Yeah, and Iron Head's out there smoking a cigarette, <laughs> and you got one guy just eating um i will give fair warning there's one scene that's very cringy um and that's oh, yeah. with uh the egg scene oh gosh yeah yeah that one it's just very weird it's just <laughs> like and that's what you occasionally run into some of these hong kong yeah um, comedies just a very weird scene out of nowhere it's just like things just got it's just odd yeah but it's it's still really funny and if you roll with it it's it's good Th that's a good point you gotta kind of be used to this and I guess that I'm not because as much as you are anyway, but the more we talk about it, the more we, we've uh, discussed everything, I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. This this movie is just, uh, it's really funny at some parts. It's really funny at some parts. Um, I do like the music. Um, I like the music, the whole thing. I mean, that's another thing that I found really interesting is the way the music is used in this film. Yeah. It gets accused of ripping off Lion King. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you know. I didn't think to about Lion that until you mentioned that. That's funny. Yeah, they they like listen to the oh Lion King gosh. soundtrack, and they're like, let's try to recreate yeah. that. But it's it's got a little bit of that, and <laughs> the the American version, the intro is very weird. It like has these planets in outer space, and then like somebody a Shaolin's <laughs> head or something. It's it's just really yeah. weird, um, but. I don't know. I, I think the comedy works really well. I'm yeah. a little biased. I will say there is one part of the film I don't think works too okay. well. Okay, and what's that? And that's how our main character, just for, it's only, it's a short little arc uh -huh. for about 15 to 20 minutes of the movie, he becomes a jerk. Yeah. And I don't really see where that comes yeah. from. He just, they get a shoe deal, they all get new shoes, mm -hmm. and just randomly he... I guess because the movie's so short, you can't really stretch it out yeah. long enough. It just seemed like it happens overnight, but he goes from being a, such a nice guy and so positive yeah. to all the time he's telling Moy, he's like, hey, you're you're weird, yeah. and telling her a bunch of stuff makes her go cry. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, because I remember that part. I was like, um, I mean, I know things happen just randomly, but this seemed too random. Yeah. So um, do you think this is just sort of like a last-minute ad, or, or what do you think happened here? I mean, I know there's a there's a longer cut of this film. Maybe yeah. there's more to it because there's like 20 minutes that gets cut out in the version that we watched. Um, right. I think that's part of it, but I also think it it's just a little underwritten. Um, it goes from he goes on a date with her. Mm -hmm. He's 
cleaning the floor and everything, showing you how humble he is just so he can get this little time with her and make her feel beautiful, letting her pick out dresses and stuff. And then the very next scene, he's he's acting like a jerk to her. And it just doesn't make any sense. It's just like, what, yeah. what happened? And then she goes home and cries and makes the sad tasting yeah. buns now so she gets fired. Um, <laughs> just all happens within a matter of like five minutes. Right. And it's just like, he he does redeem himself very fast. But yeah, he does. It's just kind of weird that he this great character became a jerk overnight. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought that was just something they just did just to, I don't know. I think they did it mainly because it happens in sports movies or yeah. it happens in movies in general. Right. Like I said, this film is kind of, it's very meta. It makes fun <laughs> of a lot of stuff. So this film... As we mm -hmm. said already, it tries to get serious for a period right. of time. It has some, especially at the end, it gets mm -hmm. kind of dramatic. And I think at that point it kind of works. Yeah. Um, I don't think those those very dramatic tones it tries to go for at times <laughs> work. But at the same time, because they don't work, it makes right. it even funnier. Does that make sense? Yeah, because that's the thing too, is like, you know, there's a lot of comedy and then it kind of gets kind of serious. It sort of kind of reminds me a little bit of like an Adam Sandler film from like the mid '90s, you know, where there's like a little bit of seriousness or, or supposed to be within the story, but it still kind of comes mm. off as silly. And that's how I kind of view, viewed this film when it tried to be serious a little bit. Yeah, definitely, and <laughs> especially in the, the final game yeah. where just everybody starts getting killed. I mean, there's yeah. our goalie that yeah. I don't know if he caught it. He's Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the guy that plays him is Danny Chan. Oh my god! Yeah. Bruce Lee and the Legend of Bruce Lee, but also in the, in the Ip Man films. Yeah. He's the guy. If I was Quentin Tarantino, I would have cast him as Bruce Lee in a heartbeat. <laughs> um, but Mr. Bruce Lee is out there yeah. being their goalie. Yeah. But he gets killed. Uh huh. I mean, they even put the sunglasses on him that Bruce Lee wore to his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that, and then you have the other guy that. He calls up his girlfriend from like 20 years ago, <laughs> right before he gets killed. Yeah, and he just gets really serious. It's it's a, at the same time it's so silly. Well, yeah. and that's the thing because you don't know like it's it's bad, and you're like, oh my gosh, all this death and destruction here after all this other silliness. Uh, it I was a little confused there for sure. So. Yeah, especially since they destroyed everybody to that point. <laughs> yeah. You know? The hardest game they match they played was against those that all girl team mm -hmm. where the girls have the mustaches. Um, that's the only team that actually got to their goalie. So wow. Team Evil really brings it, and that's what makes it the final sort of showdown with Way being the goalie and how she stops it, and Iron Leg finally scores. It makes it that much more triumphant, right. even though because of the tone of the film, we kind of knew they were gonna win. Right. Very silly film. Check it out. It, it's it's definitely worth your time. If you just want to turn your brain off, <laughs> just go for the ride. Beware, beware. Be ready for some weird stuff because it happens in the film. That shit comes with the territory, but Indeed. definitely worth your time. Definitely fun. That's true. Uh, for those who are familiar with this film, is there any... I know you mentioned a couple films in the intro, but is there any other films like this you would recommend uh, if they've seen this film or... Have any interest in any other uh, Stephen Chow films? Um, it depends on what you're into. Like, yeah, there's some that definitely are, are sillier than this. Even like, there's this right. one called like, Love for Delivery or Love on Delivery, and it's this one right. day in the early '90s. Um, the same guy that plays Golden Leg, he's he's like his sidekick, his trainer. No he actually partnered with that guy a bunch of yeah. films, um, but that one is. It's kind of like a love movie. He's trying to impress this girl. He says he's this awesome yeah. kung fu master. And he's not really. But he'll show up wearing this Garfield mask on. And just get his butt kicked. And act like he's just this awesome kung fu guy. And he'll just basically get his butt kicked until the people get worn out. Wow. And then he'll, he'll beat them. It's, it's really wow. silly. Uh, I... I just like all of his films. There are some that are a little too weird for me, like his oh, his version of Journey to the West. It's it's just all over the place. It, I don't even understand the point of that movie too much. 
other than just it has a few mo funny moments and some crazy action right. in it. But I just, these are great. I would say even like your Jackie Chan films, if you want yeah. something a little, little less silly but still kind of funny, Jackie Chan in the 80s and 90s, he was at the top of his game. He kind of straddles this line between comedy and action. And some of his actually are musicals. Like, I don't know if you know this, Jackie Chan is a really good singer. I've heard that, yes. Yeah, he's really good. And yeah. um, so if you're interested in him, he does, he, he and Stephen Chow, they seem like they should just do a crossover film sometime. I think you, you could probably correct me if I'm wrong. I think he's actually done a lot of dubbing for Disney films, singing and stuff. Yeah, he does the voice for a lot of Disney Chinese films. So that's that's pretty cool. So there you go. You get you get every a little bit of everything here on Supercast. And coming up, if um, you are a fan of 007, we're gonna take it back a little bit to the early 90s when Bond sort of had his first resurgence. He's had a little bit of one in the 2000s, but in the uh, mid 90s he had a little bit of resurgence with Pierce Brosnan. And it kicked off with the classic GoldenEye, which is probably now known better for the video game than the actual film. And while we love the video game, we're going to talk about the film GoldenEye on our next episode, man. Are you ready for this? I am. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. Yes, sir. So stick around for that. Uh, really enjoyed this film. Really enjoyed talking about it. And go check it out if you guys haven't. And uh, there we go. <laughs> this has been a good episode. We'll see you next time on the Supercast. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Supercast. We release these twice a week, so if you want to stay up on things, check out our Facebook group and our Twitter. We're very active. We'd like you to be active too. So find us Supercast spelled with a Z. Also, stay tuned to YouTube where we do live streams and stuff like that. Just like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for listening to the Supercast.